Good morning. Good morning. A couple of announcements before we get started. Um, first of all, uh, today and next Sunday, we'll be taking a special noisy offering uh, for school, uh, for the LW, I think for LW, yeah, for LW and L for school, personal care, and baby kiss, the Lutheran world relief. And also, we now have a podcast. We made that announcement last week, but we are on Spotify. Uh, if you'd like to listen to the sermon at a later date, in, in the next couple weeks, we're hoping to put some more content on there. But there are multiple ways to, uh, to listen in if you can't make it for any variety of reasons. And included among that is now we have a Spotify channel. So you can do Grace Lutheran Church, Cincinnati, I think is what you search. Grace Lutheran, just search for Grace Lutheran Church Cincinnati, Spotify, um, if you'd like to add that. Um, also, if you're interested, Laura Lee is having a project, um, and if you're interested in that project, make sure you check with her, and uh, doing some of those interviews, she'd be happy to uh, talk to you about that. We have a flood bucket project underway right now, and we'd like to fill up 15 of those flood buckets, and we've got very nicely organized down at the bottom uh, in the, the burden entryway. If you want to pick up something to bring to put in those uh, the buckets, um, and you know, there's more information as well. You can also talk uh, down an MO uh, for more details. Deadline October 25th. Uh, the only other announcement is that we are continuing our sermon series. And Talk about the different parts of our body. Our body is a living sacrifice. We have as being a Christian affect the different parts of our body, how we use the different parts of our body for God's glory. And uh, last week we talked about the head, and this week we're talking about our hearts. And so we're looking at some verses from Proverbs talking about um, uh, seeking the, the right one and finding uh, a good spouse. And, Proverbs, it's particularly from the perspective of a young man looking for a woman, a wife, and uh, but it's also I think it's applicable. It's one of those sorts of you know, people say this. This is, this is the proverb version of women want to be her and men want to be with her. The wife of noble character uh, that would be described. But it talks about what uh, our our values, what we should be seeking after and, and striving for it and desiring. So we'll be talking about that a little bit in our message. That covers our announcements for this morning. We'll begin our service with the ringing of the bell. Okay.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful enemies. We have sinned against you without virtue, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you through our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just we deserve your blessing. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We continue with the injury. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord? I will lift up the cup of salvation. Precious in the sight of the Lord. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my thoughts. Indeed, you have loosed my heart. Indeed, you have loosed my
not stand before you relying on anything we have done. Help us to trust in your abiding witness. And deliver according to your word, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> Two readings uh, from the Old Testament in place of the epistle reading, we have uh, uh, we have two Proverbs reading. The first is from Proverbs chapter five. And, uh, the book of Proverbs, as I said, is really written as a book of advice, mostly given from a, uh, applicable to anyone, but kind of written from the perspective, perhaps because this what was really happening of Solomon giving advice to us, his son. Proverbs chapter five. My son, be attentive to my wisdom, incline your ear to my understanding, and you may keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps follow the path of the shield. She does not ponder the path of life, her ways wander, and she does not know it. And now, O sons, listen to me. And do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her. And do not, do not go near to the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others, and your years to the merciless. Lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of the corn. At the end of your life, you groan when your flesh and body are consumed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle reading is actually from Proverbs, and this is where I message is based most closely on. An excellent wife who can find. She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hand to the distaff and her hand Hold the spindle, she opens her hand to the poor, and reaches out her hands and hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her households are clothed in scarlet. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and, her, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Men and women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. This is the word of the Lord. Father Almighty. 
mighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things are made, who brought us men for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory. Judge for the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is sworn by your prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection. Peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The heart, we might describe, is the engine of the human body. After all, your brain, leg, organs, basically all your members need blood, your lifeblood, to support them in order to operate. Your body needs your nutrients, energy, antibodies, and all kinds of other stuff that I'm not qualified to explain that only the blood can deliver. You can't have a healthy body without a healthy heart. And so too, it's essential for us to pay attention to and care for not just outward things, not just what you can see and observe, but to our hearts as Christians and when it comes to our faith. The things that make you, well, you, the things that motivate you and excite you that's what we mean today by when we refer to heart, not just the organ itself, right? The heart in the body is the locomotion engine that pumps blood to all the different parts of the body, so each one can be nourished and strengthened. And likewise, the Christian heart 
is the engine that moves all of our faith and all the parts of our body in service to our Lord. And that means that issues of the heart are no small matter. Just ask any doctor. Any matter of the heart, well, it matters. So too, having a heart centered on Christ is no small matter either. If the heart ain't working, you go. You can go through all the motions of faith, but eventually if your Christian heart is sick, the faith of a Christian will fall apart. And one key thing to remember is the key to a healthy Christian heart, much like a Christian mind, is to be focused on Jesus. Of course, it's hard to think about our heart without thinking about love. Heart and love go together, and our world definitely aches for and longs for and thinks about and sings about love a lot. I just turn on the radio, and most of the songs on the radio focus on love, whether it's singing someone's praises or complaining about a breakup or anger over betrayal. Love is probably the most consuming and motivating force in among human beings. Uh, that's why I picked these verses from Proverbs that talk about finding the right one. Uh, that's an important quest for most, uh, for many young men and women in the world, around finding the one that's right for me. It's a wonder of God's creation that what often drives us is love, the desire to find one with whom we can spend and share our life with. Well, Proverbs, as I've already made mention, is written like a father speaking to his son who is coming of age. Perhaps the most important advice given to the young man is that he spends his time and his passion on a woman who is worthy of his devotion and affection. The heart and soul of a person is, is a vulnerable and precious thing, so it shouldn't be treated cheaply or thoughtlessly. So earlier, we read in Proverbs chapter 5, the young man is encouraged not to go after an adulteress and to avoid the, the blatantly sexy but also shady and untrustworthy woman. She, looked, she makes every effort to look good on the outside, but her inside is poisonous and dangerous, and she saps away man's life. Instead of the fast but faithless type of woman, Proverbs encourages seeking and embracing a wonderful wife. In fact, he says, more precious than jewels is the woman who is resourceful, compassionate, hardworking, and clothed with strength and dignity. Her husband and her children both praise her and give thanks to God for her. And uh, I think it's really, really instructive what all Proverbs chapter 31 praises. And it's not what you, certainly not what you would expect from a male chauvinist sort of perspective. Rather, it talks about resourcefulness and trust, trustworthiness and uh, ability to do all kinds of things. It's and it's really important when we're talking about the heart, and that's why it's brought up in Proverbs, the chapter of wisdom. Spends wisdom, uh, a lot of wisdom is spent talking about who you spend your time with. And it's really important when it comes to our heart that we keep in mind these kinds of things because uh, we shouldn't just follow wherever our hearts lead, but in some ways, at least, our heads and our Lord should be leading our hearts, training our hearts to seek after that which is best, whether it be a good spouse or wisdom. And Proverbs is not only about, it's on the surface, it's about seeking a good spouse, but it's also about seeking the, the faithfulness and committed love of Yahweh over the enticing and attractive but ultimately bankrupt uh, idols of the surrounding nations. Well, in our faith, it is the way in which we choose to I slide, oh, there we go. Uh, 
in our faith, the way we choose to live and make decisions, it's easy also, right, to be enticed by all sorts of things that look good at first, that which feels good at first, but in the end does us no good. Just because it feels good, right, doesn't make it good. And so it's important for us as we talk about our heart to acknowledge, one, that our hearts are not by nature perfect, uh, but rather need some training and correction. It's, uh, we can't simply follow unabashedly, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, listen to your heart, which gets put out there. Sometimes it's certainly true, but there are also times you can't just listen to your heart. It's important to be training us to be looking for and longing for what is eternal. It's much better for our hearts to be pining after God's kingdom than after money, power, or good feelings. And so, as much as we can, we train our hearts. Uh, yeah, as much as we can, we train our hearts. Here, Again, your heart is not automatically a spiritual all-star. It needs to put in the work, right? It needs to do some training. We can feed and encourage in ourselves the right sorts of attitudes and desires, at least to a, a certain extent. And that's exactly what the writer of Proverbs is encouraging, this, in this case, a young man to do. What should you desire? Think about resourcefulness, strength of character, loyalty. And someone who cares and works hard. Those are probably the most important values when finding a spouse. In fact, that's what we ought to be looking for whenever we're looking to anyone for a, some sort of commitment in our lives. And certainly applies to what we, you know, we're, it's easy for us to be selfish in a lot of ways, but sometimes we're not far seeking enough when it comes to making decisions about faith or who we follow uh, to be thinking about who's going to be good to us. And uh, that's the, certainly the repeated promise in the scriptures and of Jesus that God will be good to us. We can trust him. We can place our lives in his hands. And it's important that we do exercise a little caution when it comes to our hearts because the heart, again, also must be trained. Uh, passion and desire are not bad things, however, they can't be trusted. The prophet Jeremiah says it rather bluntly, the heart is deceitful of all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Right? That began, sometimes you can't even understand what your heart wants, much less go for it. When it comes to our hearts, it's important to remember that our hearts are uh, absolutely and our passions and our feelings are an essential part of who we are, but we can't let our desires drive us alone. Rather, we need to rein them in. We need our heads, right, to help lead our hearts. And we need not just any head, but the head we talked about last week. We need a Christian mind, led by the Holy Spirit to guide and direct our passions and desires. And that's kind of going to be a reoccurring theme as we look about the different parts of the body, right? It's a body, and so we can't look at them entirely separately. They work together. There's a reasoning in the order that we've chosen um, that we start with the head, then we go to the heart, and then we're going to see how, in the future, how the heart pumps out life and motivation to the rest of our body as well. Earlier in Proverbs, it says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This is that promise that I was talking about. This is certainly not the only place in the scriptures, the Old Testament or the New Testament for that matter, where God makes us these kinds of promises. Just like, you know, if you're, when you're married or you're in love or in a relationship, you make promises all the time and tell each other things and uh, reassure one another. And that's what the Lord does throughout the scriptures. You can trust me. Trust in me with all your heart. You can lay bare your whole heart to me, God says, and commit your way to me, and you're not going to be disappointed in me, and I'm not going to let you down. If we lean on the word way of this world, whatever it is that we choose to lean on will eventually disappoint or betray us. But not if we trust in the Lord with all our heart. Because the human heart is designed to be given to one spouse, 
And the human heart is also designed to worship and serve and be connected to one Lord and Savior. What's more, we can trust our Lord and Savior because God has shown us his heart by sending us his love through his Son, his only begotten Son, to speak to us, to heal us, and to die and rise for us. If we want to know God's heart, then all we need to do is look at our Savior. In fact, it's God's love where it all starts, right? We love because he first loved us, the Apostle John tells us. And that's what can best motivate and change our hearts. It's simple. It's receiving God's love for us. Receiving the love of Christ through, through God's promises, through his this special meal of his body and blood shed for us, those are ways in which we experience love, the love of God. So good, so good that we want to share it with others. In the same way that um, perhaps some of the, the best thing that can happen for a family is, is uh, that uh, the parents receive love, um, and then they're more likely and more able to pass love on uh, to their children. It's the same way with our faith. If we receive love from our Lord, we're more able, having been loved and experiencing love, uh, to be able to share that love with the world around us. In fact, uh, but the question remains, how can we get a better heart? David prays in the Psalms, created me a clean heart of God. It's still all, all about Jesus and God's word and prayer. And so we got some of the same steps we used to have. We ask God to transform our hearts. We spend time with our Lord. And we, we might put it a little differently this week and say it's important to receive God's love, to receive his promises and his uh, confirmation and assurances of his love for us so we can pass them. But... Uh, Assuming that all that is true and that we've got that in place, what kind of advice can we have specifically for our hearts? And how can we use our hearts in service to God? Well, I think a, a, a really key piece is, is simply thinking about what we're already passionate about. What are, what are we already caring about and passionate about? And is there a way that we can use the things that we care a lot about in service to others or to our Lord. Right? What, what are you passionate about? What gets the wheels turning in your mind? What gets you excited? What keeps you awake at night in a, in a good way that you're thinking about and planning about? Uh, those are the kind of things to think about. And again, perhaps already you've been thinking about We've got, after all, lots of wonderful people here at Grace who are doing exactly that, putting their passion into practice. We have folks who are good with a variety of things, including uh, good with, with finances or with flowers, good with uh, food or faith, all these things. And people who are passionate about these things help out uh, in, in, in church or uh, apart from church. We have people who are handy, who like to fix things, who like to organize things, who like to teach. And all these people come together. Uh, and we, I like to think, make a positive impact on the world and serve our Lord at the same time. So it comes back to when we talk about our heart. What does your heart long after? What do you love to see happen? Uh, and have you connected that passion with your faith? I suspect, at least to some degree, for many of you, that's, that's true, that you've already connected that passion uh, to your faith. Uh, but keep, it's worth revisiting. How can I take what I love and make not just my life a better place, but make my world a better place, my church a better place, my work a better place? The scripture tells us, after all, that God gave us our gifts and our heart, our passions and even our heart to make not just our lives better, but uh, the lives of others better as well. To serve our neighbor, and often that's the, 
best way we glorify God is by serving our neighbor. How can we, how can God's word, as we said, migrate from our head into our hearts, and then that pumps life blood so that our hands and feet are moving for Christ our Lord. And each week we talk about having a, a challenge, and uh, this week again we have a challenge, and uh, and that's to think about what you're passionate about doing, the things that matter to you, the things that you enjoy doing, and think about one way in which you can use that passion let the end, the heart engine of your faith motivate you and drive you to, to do something for a fellow human being or for God or for your church or related to your passions. And, and again, for many of you, if you're already doing something like that, which many of you are, I guess the challenge then is to remember that it, it's not don't, don't just go through the motion. Remember that it's something that you're passionate about. That you care about, and that it really is a great privilege and opportunity to serve Jesus as you serve others. And so, what, whatever it is that you're already doing, just do it a, a little extra oomph with a little extra heart this week. Pour out your heart into what you do. As we are Christians, and as we think about having a Christian heart this week, let's make the world a, a little better place and pour a little more heart a little more Christian heart into the world around us, knowing that we're not just serving others, but serving Christ our Lord and giving a testimony to Him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we continue. Uh, we play some offering music and remind you that even though we don't have what we're used to, for so many years passing around an offering plate, um, we do have the offering box in the back and the opportunity to get online. So, thank you.
us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people of the world. Merciful Lord, give to us hearts that desire what you want and strive after your kingdom. Help us to care about what is lasting and eternal and to delight in the light of Christ and his salvation. As sinners find refuge in your grace and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in all our relationships with those around us. Help us to be faithful as spouses, friends, workers, family members, and citizens. Guide our decisions to be driven by concern, care, and wisdom as we look for the good not only of ourselves, but of our neighbors, community, and world. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, give wisdom and courage to our elected and appointed leaders that they may pursue justice, seek peace, and protect life. Bring an end to the threats of terror and violence and open all nations to the voice of your word. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Bless a husband and wife that they may be united in faith and hope and love and that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word, nurture the lives of our children in Sunday school and catechism classes as, and help us to effectively and joyfully share the salvation and joy we have in Christ our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Give to the trouble in mind your peace, to the suffering relief, to the sick healing, to the grieving comfort, and to deliver the dying and everlasting life. Here's especially for Dave and Edie Hampton, Billy Beinkemper, Elaine Cheesebrew, Dave and Linda Isley, Esther Goldfuss, Becca Cannonbird, Linda McKay, Terry McKay, Nancy Niehaus, Charlie Otten. Donna Nimmo, Lester Rampage, Ken Ross, Rita Sohn, Becky Stamper, David Stamper, Ruth Thomas, Guy Goldlever, as well as friends of the congregation, including Art, Bucky, and Beth. Heavenly Father, you know all these, your little lambs, and you fed them throughout their life, and pray that you continue to watch over and take care of them, and give them an extra measure of your protection and peace, and we ask that be your will help as they face difficulties. Watch over them and by my spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, open our hearts to be generous with you and with those around us. Teach us to use our lives and possessions as a way to serve the world and glorify your name. Lead and direct your entire church and enable us to do your work. Lord, in your mercy. May no unrepentant sin hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, rather may the fruits of this communion be reflected in the manner of life, keeping with who we are as God's children by baptism and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Here are the prayers of your people, o Lord, and grant to us all things good and wholesome, and keep from us all things harmful. Give us contentment that, trusting in your mercy, we may delight in your saving will, where the last are made for by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and sound for that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, O my Father, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and our and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. <laughs> Testament in my book, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name is come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our day of prayer. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Yes.
thank you. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for your mission of your sins. It is strength and preserve you in true faith to life eternal.